Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, hope you had a good break. Okay, um, let's resume from where we left off. In the previous session, we completed the case study of the Church of Antioch and their pros and cons or the highs and their lows, um, all the work that they did. Okay, um, so I hope it kind of gives you an insight of about the growth of just I know it's only two churches, but I hope it you know uh, it encourages you, inspires you uh, something about them. Okay, and now let's just take a look at um, the stages of growth. Okay, um, we've we've taken some of the key points from uh, the book called the Apostolic Strategies Affecting Nations by Dr. Jonathan David, uh, and we've outlined a few uh, several stages. Uh, here okay so his book is called apostolic strategies affecting Na nations by and the author is dr jonathan david okay so there are different uh, stages of growth and to, more specifically to our context and the stages of growth in church uh, the growth of a, a local church okay and one of the first early stages is the pioneering stage okay um i mentioned uh, in the last class that we will talk a little bit more about uh, pioneering being a pioneer of a church right uh, this is what it is the, the first early stages so what what is this stage all about the church planting team uh, and leaders establish commitment to a territory where the lord has sent them or uh, or a family or an individual okay so uh, the church planting team and leaders establish commitment uh, that means, okay, you'd actually say, okay, hey, this is where the Lord has called me to go. And so, and because of that, you are you are obeying God's word and you're, and you're committing to what God has spoken to you and you are saying, yes, I, I will go there, right? Uh, so that's the first step as a pioneer. You are showing your commitment. You're establishing it by going to the place, okay? Uh, it's pretty much like so many people that we can think of, like, one of the first things that can come to your mind is say Abraham he didn't go plant a church and all but uh, when God says go then he said he just packed his bags and, and he left right um, that's how you show your commitment and then you start laying out the groundwork through prayer intercession reaching out building bridges with a community that is being uh, reached uh, you're laying the foundations down okay as a pioneer you uh, you're praying, you're interceding for the city or for the town that God has sent you. And then you you know, you ask, okay, what is it uh, in that's burdening your heart regarding this city? You start, um, you start hearing from God. Okay, initially he says, okay, go there, but he might not always give the big picture. Now, he, very rarely he gives a big picture. I can't think of any instances where he's given a big picture, but he always works in process, okay. Uh, once again, I'm reminded of, uh, you know, Abraham, uh, you know, he, God tells Abraham, take your son, your only son, and go to the place that I will show you. That means he hasn't still shown him the place uh, where Abraham is to take Isaac, right? So what Abraham obeys and he says yes, and he goes, and then he says, go to that mountain. And that's how it is in, in our cases, isn't it? When God tells us to go to a place, he will not necessarily say, you know everything okay this like okay you should buy a house in this area you should go there okay plant no maybe he will you never know because i'm not going to put god in a box um but that's what it is the first step will lead to another and one to another and the next to another and now that he sent you to a place as a pioneer you start seeking the heart of god for that city for the people there okay what is it that you want me to do here why is me uh, you know, you start praying and then you start interceding, right? Uh, interceding simply means standing in the gap or standing in the middle. That's what intercession simply means. Once again, Abraham stood uh, in the gap uh, and he interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah, right? It's like, okay, even if at least there's 10 people, will you spare the city? And will you, if there's one person who's righteous, will you spare the city? Um, right? So as a pioneer, you, you have to pray. Like, uh, there's another uh, brilliant book on prayer that I would encourage you to get your hands on. It's called, uh, I mean, it's an author called E.M. Bounds. I'll just put it in the chat section. He has a lot of materials on prayer. Um, 
and there's so many wonderful authors out there who've written uh, on the topic of prayer, but he's extensively written on the topic of prayer uh, and the importance of it for us as ministers uh, of God. Uh, we can't neglect that. Um, every successful uh, minister uh, who's, been, who, who's been in ministry uh, for decades and decades um, is because their, their prayer life is strong. Um, there is no substitute for it. Okay, so laying the groundwork. Groundwork is not always uh, the cleanest work. Okay, uh, you're going to get hurt. Your hands are going to get dirty. Uh, everything is going to get messy. But that it's much needed, isn't it? It's the most important part. Okay, so laying the groundwork through prayer, through intercession, uh, reaching out reaching out or outreach where you reach out to the uh, to the community to people and you're exploring uh, you know what can be done you're, and then you're building bridges uh, with the community that is being uh, reached okay and all of these uh, as you as you seek God as you as you wait on him to hear from him he'll start giving you strategies and ideas hey okay hey this is a bridge that you can build uh, you know you can do this to reach this community uh, and and whatnot okay so this is the pioneering stage remember this is the first stage of group are you with me okay hope I haven't lost you already uh, okay so here is the a question okay uh, when you hear from God uh, for a particular city or place to go uh, and you go and share with your pastor about it. And if he says why you want to go so far, work here. I will put you in the cell group as a leader. You can serve God here. What should one do in this case, Rosalind? Why are you asking me all these hard questions, Rosalind? <laughs> <Just kidding>. uh, well, <laughs> sorry, it's <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, God's voice uh, is more real, isn't it? Um, and I mean, you have to respectfully. I mean, if you are hundred percent sure that God is leading you to a place, um, and uh, hey, no, I, I, I don't. Please don't apologize, Rosalind. Okay, because it's funny because it's happened to me in my life, so I know about it. That's why I kind of laughed. <laughs> uh, where you are hundred percent uh, real about it. Um, you have to take a stand and because God's voice is more real he is more real uh, and and yeah and then just pray that uh, the pastor understands because uh, at this stage I think you you choose if you want to please God or if you want to please man um, so and I think choice is kind of easy sometimes not necessarily but yeah, I mean, with all honesty, that it, like if you're hundred percent sure, uh, I think you will simply have to take a stand and say, you know, his voice is more real. And I'm sorry, I can't take you up on that offer. I'm flattered, absolutely flattered by your generosity of the offer, but uh, I unfortunately have to decline it. <laughs> take a more corporate shaft <laughs> and give a very diplomatic response. You know, polite refusal, as we used to call it in uh, cor corporate. <laughs> I, yeah. Hope that answers, Roshan. Because I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah. Can I just add something to this? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one thing is with regard to um, uh, the authority, uh, uh, and it's it's not sin to say no. <laughs> uh, having said that, uh, we have to also see if we are equipped to. Uh, or trained enough to take up a new assignment, yeah. um, that part of it. And uh, another thing which I want to say is, um, we also, when we become a leader and if one of our members want to do it, we also should feel free to let them go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> rather than yeah. manipulate. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah, I think that's how the early church grew, isn't it? Part of the growth was that they were sending out people. Uh, that was that was actually a huge part of the growth is that they sent out sent people out. Um, they blessed them and released them, isn't it? So, yeah, 
I hope that answers that also. Yeah. Yeah. Any anything else, guys? Any other questions? Yes. I really think it was question. Static again. Uh, sorry. Okay, I come back. Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, I think Rosalina's question is trying to put our eyes into the future. If we do become pastors and we've got subordinates who yeah. are being called by God, we should yeah. learn as leaders not to manipulate people. Yeah. We should learn to motivate them, yeah. allow them to develop their wings and fly. So we yeah. would only encourage them, pray for them, and ask them the nitty gritty questions. How yeah. has God told you about, about this? We would be helping them to build their dreams, not them yeah. to be in our dream always. Yeah. That's what I can say. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for adding that. That's, that's wonderful, isn't it? Uh, thanks, Lubega. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, the third point of the pioneering stage, uh, on, on the top of page 30 is it is the foundation laying stage you are going down instead of going up uh, right you are going down instead of going up but a strong and a deep foundation is necessary for future growth uh, typically the higher you are going to build the deeper you must dig to lay the foundation um, okay so this is a very key uh, stage uh, of the church growth, um, guys, is the pioneering stage. How, how well you pioneer will um, we'll see how, la how long the, you know, the ministry of the church uh, lasts, right? So the deeper you go, the higher you can go up. Okay, so that's the first stage, the pioneering stage. Uh, the second stage is the administrative, organizational, and structural stage. What, uh, boring stage? <laughs> uh, is it uh, like too much work uh, stage? But a very important stage as well. Now that you've laid the foundations, um, everything is set in its place. Uh, now you start building, isn't it? Um, you know, brick by brick, brick by brick, layer by layer, um, one, one step at a time keep going so you will uh, once again you will learn a lot more about church administration uh, in your uh, i think if not is there a subject that you already is there a course that you guys are already doing or i think next semester is uh, the church administration if i'm not mistaken oh right this is uh, second year okay you'll learn about it in the third year guys okay getting let me keep thinking you'll learn in the final year okay so as the congregation begins to grow, establish well-defined systems and process to serve the people. Okay, uh, Establish well-defined systems and process. Uh, the key here is to serve the people. Okay, It's not as well-established systems for the sake of having a system or a process for the sake of having the process. Uh, every every system that you want to set in place or every process that you want to set in place or establish uh, it should be in the mind on how you can serve the people better right um, and how they can serve the church better so vice versa so as the congregation begins to grow begin to establish systems uh, assign roles and functions of various ministries that the lord releases in your midst uh, establish godly standards and guidelines for your ministry teams so that new members who uh, come in uphold these values okay so one more time i want to read that point assign roles and functions for various ministries that the lord releases in your midst so when you start off initially with a church uh, you know when you start planting a church and initially it may just be like okay you're the pastor uh, and you're doing everything like the apostles did Right, uh, you're taking care of the finances. You're taking care of the worship. Uh, you're serving the communion. Uh, you're cleaning the church. You're setting up the sound equipments. Uh, middle of your sermon, you're running back to the soundboard. You're increasing your volume. You're decreasing the volume. You're doing everything. You're doing the PPT for the songs for your sermon. <laughs> you're doing everything. Uh, but as the ministry grows, uh, you know you start 
uh, you know, breaking them out into different teams. You need a worship team. You need uh, an accounts team. Uh, you know, everything a volunteering team that takes care of this and whatnot. Uh, with the and with all these different teams that are emerging, uh, so to say, uh, there are people involved, uh, and with people being involved, you need to have guidelines. Uh, if there are no guidelines, see notice that it says guidelines and not a rule book. Okay, like rule is a rule, you know, kind of thing. But it's a guideline. It's it's kind of a diplomatic way of saying like hey, here to help you. Uh, if you take a look at the website, uh, All People's Church website, and just go to guidelines section, uh, there, <laughs> there are quite a lot of uh, guideline PDFs uh, for every volunteering teams. Um, and you're welcome to download them and go through them as well. Okay, uh, assigned roles and functions for various ministries uh, and that the Lord releases in your midst. Um, the structure, the way it's set hasn't changed at least in the last 10 years that I've been part of APC. Uh, you know, the structure is okay, Pastor Ashish is a senior pastor, and then we have associate pastors. Uh, for each location, we have five locations, uh, and each location uh, is an associate pastor. I'm talking only about Bangalore City, guys, um, but it's the same thing, you know. And uh, and then under us, the associate pastor will have, uh, you know, different teams that's in charge of that location. Like the volunteering team, uh, the car parking team, uh, you know, the first time visitors, greeting greeters team, uh, the welcome team, welcome lounge team, you know, people who are coming in. So all of these various teams that and there can be like so many different teams. At APC, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, recently we had this volunteer appreciation day. Okay, so there's we take a day off uh, one Sunday uh, a year. We ex we express our generosity and our appreciation uh, to uh, to their to what they are doing. Uh, we appreciate the volunteers, and so I was just going through the whole sheet, and I was, and I was like, wow, you know, 19 different teams work together to make one service happen. Uh, 19 different teams. Um, so. Uh, there might be churches with more teams uh, or lesser. That, that the point is, there are teams that are working together to make one search, one church service ha uh, happen, and and that's pretty significant, isn't it? Um, so assigning roles and functions is very key. Okay, this is a very important stage, by the way, guys. Okay, this is just the second stage, but administrative, organization, and structural stage is key to the growth of your ministry okay uh, point three says do now what you will do even after you have increased in numbers right uh, do now what you will even what you will do even after you have increased in numbers okay uh, don't say uh, is it, okay first let me grow a number and then I think it's better to do this and whatnot but do as if you're, you know, you're fully at it, and you're al already um, envisioning, you know, what you'll be doing. Uh, put process in place where, when you have 50 people in attendance, which you will maintain when you have grown to 500 people or 5,000 people. Okay, uh, all these things are going to, uh, you know, help. Uh, I was having a conversation with uh, with a friend of mine uh, regarding setting a culture of, you know, any any new place that you're in. Any organization that you step into, a new organization or ministry or wherever you are, you are, um, there's already a culture in place. Now that could be a good thing, good culture, or a, a bad culture. It could either be a culture of gossip, uh, jealousy, and blah blah blah, whatever, or it could be a culture of the kingdom, of 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 growth and of everything uh, related to the kingdom of God and whatnot. So. Because if you don't set a culture, uh, the culture will be set for you by the people in the organization, right? Uh, I remember this uh, an example of uh, a person was talking about culture. He said, okay, uh, a good organization with a bad culture is like this, a delicious food on a dirty plate. <laughs> okay, uh, imagine your favorite food on a very dirty plate. Yeah, would you eat that? Uh, doesn't matter how good that food, you know, 
uh, is you're not going to eat off a dirty plate. All right, so that's pretty much basically how he was explaining a bad culture, right? Uh, everything can look good on the outside, uh, but um, yeah, it's not helping anybody. All right, and the last point is new ministries can be birthed uh, by the spirit in one of two ways. The Lord gives a vision of what needs to be done as you declare that vision. God serves a people who will um, who will step into step in it, step into it, and carry it. Okay, uh, like the first thing is okay. There is a need in your church, uh, and then you've been praying about it. Uh, like for example, uh, um, a live streaming team or uh, IT team, uh, some a uh, couple of people who can handle the technical department of it, or or a creative arts uh, team, whatnot, right? Um, you've been praying about it, and you've been asking God to bring in the right people, and then He does. Uh, you know, so God will God will stir up people, uh, you know, who will step into it and carry it out. Uh, new ministry is now been born. Okay, you know, there's the creative arts team in in your church uh, that you've been praying for. Uh, you know, the Lord may raise or send people with certain gifts and callings, uh, and you recognize these. Uh, taking the same example, uh, you know, it may seem like, okay, hey, this person is good with photography or, uh, you know, uh, storytelling and whatnot. I think it'd be great if this person can uh, do certain things like, say, a short film, uh, you know, using the young people, talent in, uh, of, our, of our youth in the church. Um, so, something that you haven't actually been praying about, but then you recognize the talent and then you say, okay, this can be used for the growth and the impact of our ministry, isn't it? So uh, so that's another part of growth. So this is the second stage, uh, people, is the administrative, organizational, and structural stage. Uh, you will learn in detail about it in the, in the church administration course next year. So don't drop out. Yes, okay. Um, the third stage now, uh, after laying the foundations and whatnot, uh, is the pastoral team stage, team ministry, uh, senior pastor stage, okay, whichever you want to call it. Uh, pastoral team stage is establish a leadership team to carry out several areas of the ministry. Uh, the founding pastor moves into a senior pastor role, providing overall vision and direction for growth and expansion. Okay. Uh, continuously create room and op opportunity for developing leaders who understand and are committed to the vision God has given. Spend time nurturing new leaders. Uh, I love this last point. It says, the more trust you give, the more faithful your leaders will be. Uh, I think Pastor Ashish has just added that because he's seen, uh, he's seen quite a lot in the last 20 years of his him being in the ministry right the most the more trust you give the more faithful your leaders will be um so very some key important points there is establish a leadership team to carry out several areas of the ministry right uh, we see in the church of antioch in the case study that we did uh, there were new leaders were constantly emerging in that church right uh, that means they were continuously creating room and opportunity for developing leaders because they were also spending time nurturing new leaders uh, so uh, a leadership plan uh, for 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 the church is is very key is they okay you know when you're not there who's going to do what uh, what happens in case if you you know if you move on um, so the leadership plan uh, is very important. Right? Um, so establishing a team to carry out several areas of ministry. Like we just say, so now Pastor Ashish at APC is the senior pastor. He is the founding pastor. In many ways, he is the pioneer. right? Um, and now there are several teams. Now, he is not leading worship. Uh, he is not leading the youth ministry. He is not leading the IT team. Uh, he is not leading the media team. He is not leading the live streaming team. He is not, uh, you know, leading the uh, the welcome lounge uh, thing. Uh, okay, everything. He is not leading children's ministry. He is not leading worship ministry or youth ministry, like I've already mentioned. But then he is the overseer of everything. Now there are teams and individuals who are appointed to take care of each area of ministry. Okay. Uh, by doing that, 
we are also being nurtured. We are also being developed as young leaders. Okay, uh, so that is the that is the third stage, the pastoral team uh, stage. Okay, uh, you're just providing overall uh, uh, site for the other leaders. Okay, so uh, the next stage, the fourth stage, is equipping. Is the equipping stage? Uh, can we very quickly go to Ephesians chapter four, verse uh, twelve? Um, Ephesians chapter four. Let's see. If anyone's there, please uh, feel free to read from Ephesians chapter four, verse twelve to sixteen. Ephesians 4, 12 to 16, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Oh, yeah. Thanks, John. Right, uh, you see, it started... Verse 12 started off by equipping the saints, right? Um, equip equipping the saints for God's work, and it ended with growth. Okay, uh, equipping of the saints, uh, this stage uh, has a lot to do with growth of the local church itself. Okay, so focus on equipping the saints, uh, you know, empowering them, discipling them. So that entire church is mobilized into ministry. It, it is no longer just the leaders doing the ministry, but everyone is involved. Okay, uh, if you remember, one of the key points from the course that we did last semester was ministering healing and deliverance is that everyone is called uh, to minister in healing and deliverance. It's not just the senior pastor, it's not just the associate pastor, okay? If you've forgotten, please go back and look at those notes, okay? Uh, one of the, one of the, that's one of the things that we believe, uh, the culture that is being set is that everyone is called to minister in healing and deliverance. It's not just the pastoral team, it's not just the leadership team, um, right? So, uh, but, that's the point that has been made here. It is no longer just the leaders doing the ministry, that everyone is involved. Uh, now, we make ministry, the word ministry sound like it's a major thing and whatnot, right? The root word of the minister ministry is, is basically the root word is cupbearer, a server. So you're, all you're doing is just serving. So it's, you know. <laughs> uh, Emphasis on supernatural ministry and moving everyone into the realm of signs and wonders and the prophetic, you're equipping them uh, and to, to go deeper and deeper, not, not just stay, uh, you know, where they are at. We're going to look at that more deep, uh, you know, much deeper a little later. The church begins to penetrate the community and catches a vision for missions. Okay, so as the saints are being equipped, as the people who are coming into the church are being equipped uh, with different things, uh, you know, different things of kingdom of God. Now, eventually, the result and the uh, of that is the church starts, uh, you know, uh, impacting and touching the community where the church is being placed, the physical local church is being placed. Okay, uh, believers are ministering to one another and to the world. Okay. Uh, any questions till now, guys? If you're hearing any pop music from my end, I apologize. Some killer scenes happening down the road, so yeah, just kindly perfect <laughs> that. But anything else? Any questions? Any thoughts that you want to uh, add? Say. 
Okay, so what's the first stage? It's the pioneering stage. Okay, uh, then you have the administrative stage, then the pastoral team stage, and now we just finished the equipping stage, okay, the building stage. Okay, so see every stage, uh, every stage is, is, uh, is important. It plays its own role, right? Okay. All right, let's move on then. Uh, to the next page is the apostolic function stage. Apostolic function stage. Establish an apostolic mindset. Okay, outward focused rather than a focus uh, on internal care. All the process in place to continue to equip the saints. Okay, all of the processes in place to continue to equip the saints. The senior pastor and others have more time to go out and gain new territory for the kingdom of God. Okay, you see this now. When everything is done that has to be done, okay, uh, pioneering stage is by default. Uh, then the administrative stage, okay, you have all the administrative teams in place, right? Uh, and as a leader, you have all the other teams in place as well. And then you've been equipping your saints uh, for, for a good amount of time, like five years or whatnot. Okay, so now that everything is done, now you start thinking big, thinking wide. Okay, okay, now I can go out on mission trip. I can uh, start, you know, impacting different regions, gaining new territory for the kingdom of God. Okay, that's what he's talking about here. The senior pastors and others have more time to go out and gain new territory for the kingdom of God. The church begins to actively reproduce itself in regions beyond okay it's a i'm just reminded so much of like uh, the financial investment that like you put in so much money and after a certain time it just keeps building on what you've already put so you've invested and uh, you've, you've you've invested for like say five years <laughs> and uh and then after that you know you keep getting returns based on what you've already in you, you can stop investing and then i'm not saying stop investing in your church An example Okay, uh, the last point there is the local church becomes more of a missions base rather than a spiritual nursery. Right, we saw how the church of Antioch was the missions base. Uh, it's from there everybody went out on a on, you know, missions trip. And the, uh, when this is in place, when you've done everything that, uh, when you've gone through every stages that's been mentioned, when you get to this stage, now, the local church becomes a mission space. So by the time the Church of Antioch became a mission space, that means it's gone through all these stages, right? Uh, it went through pioneering stage, the administrative stage, the pastoral team stage, equipping the stage, uh, you know, equipping stage, and then the apostolic function stage. So they were at this stage uh, when, by the time it became a mission space, right? And so with all these things, um, with all these different stages, uh, it just is only screaming changes right different stages means different changes uh right and as pastors or as ministry leaders we need a lot of wisdom uh anointing and grace to lead our congregation can someone say an amen uh, <laughs> okay uh we need a lot of wisdom we need a lot of grace to lead our congregation uh right because, uh, like I, as I just mentioned, uh, with each stage, uh, there's going to be a change that's coming, and the change is necessary. Uh, there will be certain, there will be a resistance sometimes. You know, as in, why do we really need this change? Do we really need to do this a different way? You know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but our congregation will have to move from you know being people who come purely to be cared for and nurtured for uh, into you know becoming apostolic uh, ap apostles as well okay we, you, you teach them you equip them and you let them know it's like hey you're not going to be a baby the whole time and i'm not going to just keep feeding you milk the whole time uh you know we have to go through different stages uh you know i'm going to give you solids and we're going to move on we got to grow uh you know and keep emphasizing that uh keep stressing on that part and let them know it's like okay i'm not satisfied with where you are spiritually we need to go deeper we need to go deeper uh you know until they are they until they have this apostolic mindset 
Okay, so constantly pushing people forward, uh, getting them uh, out of their comfort zone, uh, it also results in growth. And it's a very important thing to do for the growth of the church in a bigger picture as well. Okay, uh, I mean, just mention a few pointers here that uh, that would be helpful to uh, to uh, helpful in growing the local church is, as I just mentioned, is pushing people forward, uh, giving them responsibility and uh, entrusting them with what's been assigned uh, to them. Um, bridging across two levels. Uh, what that means is minister to people at their spiritual level and stretch them to the next level. So we spoke a lot about equipping the saints, isn't it? Uh, discipling them, uh, empowering them. Uh, you meet them at the point of their need. See where they are. Okay, you know, we can have all the degrees that we want to have, uh, all the PhDs and whatnot, but then if we don't speak to them in their language uh, and meet them at their level, that means, you know, Sometimes, okay, they might know a lot more in any topic given. So we need to equip ourselves to get to that level and then talk to them. Or sometimes we need to stoop low, okay, so that we can uh, engage with them in their language at their level. And then you're saying, okay, hey, it's good that you're here. I'm happy that you are here, but let's keep going. Okay, there's room, there's space for us to grow. Okay, you need to, you need to come with me, you know. Uh, so you're constantly pushing uh, them to, uh, to grow. Uh, our teaching and preaching must it must stretch their spiritual capacity okay um your teaching and preaching must stretch their spiritual capacity okay um so that's bridging across two levels and as i mentioned that there is always going to be resistance uh, when it comes to change. Uh, when you ask them to go to a deeper level, it's like, I do I really need to go to a deeper level? I'm just happy, uh, you know, being where I am. Uh, I love Jesus, and I know he's my personal Lord and Savior. It's all cool. Uh, you know, I want to end there. But then, but, you, but then you show them very patiently and say, them, hey, from the word of God, saying, okay, hey, this is where, you know, this is what the Bible has to say about this. Uh, there's so much more for us to encounter and experience him. So let's go, okay? Um, so we need the grace to explain that with wisdom. Uh, we need to have uh, patience because <laughs> uh, that will be tested, believe me. <laughs> okay. Um, so you have to lead the change. Okay? If you want to see the change, you have to lead the change. Um, you guys with me? Yeah? So... Uh, constantly pushing forward, you leading the change is very important. And also having the right people at the right place at the right time. Uh, I can't stress how important um, that is for the growth and, and, and the development of your ministry as well. Okay, uh, for example, in the worship team, what we do is uh, we we need, if when every time we want to add new people to the team, um, and now that I lead the worship ministry at APC, I'm not just going to put a billboard saying, like, anyone who wants to join the worship team, please come. So all are welcome. You know, come, full musti. No, <laughs> uh, it's not going to happen. So we have a process in place, right? Uh, we have a, an audition. Uh, we send out a form saying, OK, hey, uh, we're going to have an audition. We'll send out two songs or you know, for, for you to sing or for you to play on an instrument and whatnot uh, at the so-and-so date, at so-and-so time. Uh, if you meet the parameters uh, you know, of, of the auditions, of being part of the team, um, then you'll be selected. If not, uh, there are other teams in church that you can serve. And we say that very politely, uh, stay away. There are other teams that you can serve in. Um, so, you know, is be part of the team so uh having the right people at the right place at the right time uh, if that is not right uh, then um it's going to be a lot of trouble uh it's it's just it's very easy to add to a team than to undo a team okay can i uh, say that again it's very easy to add to a team than to undo a team 
okay it's like adding someone to the whatsapp group and then you realize oops okay should this person really been in this group it's just a whatsapp group but then we all make it a big issue out of it and then you remove the person that person removed me from the group how can they remove you know have you ever been part of that drama <laughs> uh well it's what it is right um but in conclusion of this chapter, uh, each time you transition into a new level of growth, there will be new kinds of challenges. So be ready. Okay. Each time you transition into a new level of growth, there will be new kinds of challenges. So be uh, ready. Uh, tap into God's wisdom. Um, don't let uh, short hindrances stop you from growing. Right. Um, there's an example that's mentioned here. You are pushing your congregation to uh, to move in the prophetic, um, right? So there can be two extremes kind of people. I'm talking about the extremes in this spectrum. So you you've been you've just finished a series on teaching on the prophetic. Uh, one end of the spectrum is people just don't believe in that. They just don't want to move in the prophetic. Uh, and the other end of the spectrum is, uh, you know, there can be one person who will use. Uh, who will use the God's name, the Lord's name in vain? He's saying, "Thus says the Lord for everything." The Lord said, "I have to uh, eat only this flavor ice cream." I, <laughs> this is just an example, bit okay? Uh, they might use that thing. Okay, the Lord said, "The Lord said for everything," and could be a a very bad example in uh, most case, right? Uh, but that's a challenge. But a challenge like that should not stop you from pushing the, your congregation. To move in the prophetic right as you deal with that situation and you move on right um, so in conclusion overall leading a local church through various stages of growth and development is challenging but also it should be extremely exciting okay um, it should be extremely exciting to just go through these different ages uh, and stages uh, of a church. Uh, you've all because you've already envisioned this, uh, you know, as a, as a leader, as a pioneer. You visioned saying, "Okay, hey, my church. I want it to be this way. I want them to. I want them to be strong in the prophetic ministry and the healing and deliverance ministry. I want them to be strong in the word and whatnot." So you have this goal, you have this vision, and then you keep setting, a step, you know, setting out every different uh, missions. Okay, to get from point A to point B, we have to do this, and I'm not going to compromise on that. Um, you know, when I say not compromise, that doesn't also mean. Um, it's partially stubborn but for a good thing <laughs> it's uh you know so you don't give up easily that's why i'm saying part you know um so i hope this uh this chapter was helpful in 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 a way that it helps you understand the importance of growth and development of a church okay by using two church as a case study from the church of jerusalem and the church of antioch and going through the different stages of, of the church and none of these stages can be compromised in the journey of, uh, of, of a church growth. Okay. Uh, that's about it, guys. Any other questions or anything that you want to add before we close? Okay, then. All right. Well, thank you for joining today's class. Uh, have a lovely weekend. Uh, I'll see you all again next week. God bless you guys. Take care. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Thanks, guys. The, Bye. the class was very, very informative. I've shared, I've shared the PDF on the stream section, FYI. Yeah, yeah we got it already. Awesome. Take care. Bye.